First AME Church Manassas invites you to our first AME Annual Health Fair, Saturday, April 18th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Absolutely free and open to the public, join us for potential life-saving on-site medical screenings, exercise, fitness, and healthy living tips and techniques. Plus, get beneficial information on health services, programs, and other wellness resources available in our surrounding community right now. And go to our website to find out about our famed annual 2K Fun Run Walk, taking off at 9 a.m. before the free health fair. That's the first AME Annual Health Fair, Saturday, April 18th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at First AME Church Manassas, 10313 South Grant Avenue, Manassas, Virginia. For more information, call 703-361-8791 or visit famechurch.com. Be blessed. Welcome to the First AME Church Manassas broadcast, where the Holy Spirit empowers us to come together in the spirit of unity, ready to work and willing to serve. With sound biblical teaching, prayer, and spiritual impartation, we know that souls will be saved, lives changed, relationships restored, and the community will be empowered by the power that works in us. So once again, welcome to the First Day in the Church Manassas broadcast. Be blessed. Good morning, church. Hope everyone is doing well this morning. I am reading the bio for our speaker today, and for a more comprehensive bio, look towards your program. Sister Candace L. Carmichael, which means Queen, Beauty, and Light, is a long-standing member of Turner Memorial AME Church in Hyattsville, Maryland. She's a young adult member, a YAM, of the Johanna Morris Women's Missionary Society and serves as the local YPD director at Turner. She's the immediate past first vice president slash chair social action commission for her local women's missionary society chapter. She has served as the member at large YAM on the local and area levels in addition to her current office held in her local society, Sister Candace currently serves as the second Episcopal District Member at Large. She, um, she served as a de delegate to the 2015 WMS Quadrennial Convention. At Turner, Sister Candace serves on the Board of Stewards as the Steward Liaison to the Music and Worship Ministry and the Lead Steward of the Lord's Table. She is also the member of the McLeod slash Powell Lay Organization serves as a youth class leader and serves on the Radical Hospitality Ministry. She is the middle child and only daughter of three children based, blessed to the union of Reverend A. Oford and First Lady Janice T. Carmichael. She is a native of North Carolina where she was an academic scholar and honor roll student. She then attended Howard University earning a bachelor's of science in biology and a minor in chemistry. She currently is employed by the Department of Homeland Security, U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services in the Office of Security and Integrity. She has coordinated the Prison Fellowship Angel Tree Christmas Celebration, worked with the planning of the local Young Lives Teen Mother Outreach Ministry, and currently as YPD Director, she works closely with the Youth Minister of Turner to coordinate ministry and outreach events for the YPD and youth. If that isn't enough, she also enjoys singing gospel music and spoiling her many godchildren. The one thing that you should understand about Sister Candace is that she is first and foremost a child and humble servant of God, a true work in progress, striving to earn her way into the kingdom. And so here at First AME of Manassas, we want to extend a warm welcome to you, Sister Candace, and we wait eagerly to hear you say to hear what you have to say. Thank you. Only a look at Jesus. Oh, so bowed down with care. He has promised to defend you. He will all your burden share. Only a look, only a look can 
turn you away from sin. A look will bring you salvation, eternal and comfort and go with you to the end. Only a look, only a look can turn say amen. Let the church say hallelujah. hallelujah. Good morning first AME. Lord knows I have been praying ever since Sister Davis called me and asked me to be your speaker today so I am thankful. So I just want to say thank you God for the opportunity for life 
and um, for the grace of God that I am here. Secondly, let me just say thank you to your awesome, beautiful, fabulous pastor, the Reverend Etoria Gawkins. Y'all, I love this woman. She is so awesome. And for letting me stand here behind her desk. And uh, this is just awesome. Um, and to this awesome Women's Missionary Society, your president, Sister Sandra Carver, your first vice president, Sister Alice Davis, your YPD director, Sister Sandy Sunny, your YPD president, Brother Bryson Holmes, and Sister Donna Lacey, who is just the WMS layperson extraordinaire. I mean, you see her everywhere, and she is just awesome. Thank you for your hospitality. And then um, thank you for some special people who thought it not robbery to be here with me to come from wherever to be here in Manassas on this day. Sister Celeria Moore, my president, my local president, my mentor in mission work. My auntie, my armor bearer for today, Sister Michelle Curtis, my good friend and sisters, Sister Judy and Sister Misi, and my little wifey dear, my nephew Artie, my good friend Addison, and then my sister girl, my mentor, my she is my girl, Sister Patricia Brown. I am just thankful that you all came to be with me on today. And then for those who could not be here but are praying, my pastor, he texted me last night to send his prayers and some of our ministerial staff and my parents, they text me early this morning because my dad, he's preparing for his word as well on today. So he sent me a message just to tell me that he is praying for his sugar to bring the word. So I am, I, I think I am good and I am covered with the prayers, but I can always use one more. Um, so if you could turn with me to a passage of scripture, it's part of your theme scripture, um, and I'll be reading it from the message version, which is Colossians 3, verses 1 through 2, and then verses 12 through 17. So if you're serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act like it. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorbed with the things right in front of you. Look up and be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. See things from his perspective. Verse 12, so chosen by God for this new life of love, dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline, be even tempered, contempt with second place, quick to forgive an offense, forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you, and regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic, all-purpose garment, never be without it, let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing and cultivate thankfulness. Let the word of Christ, the message, have the run of the house. Give it plenty of room in your lives. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense. And sing, sing your hearts out to God. Let every detail in your lives, words, actions, whatever, be done in the name of the master, Jesus, thanking God the Father every step of the way. Let us pray. Lord, have your way. Let your people hear and see you through the word. In Jesus' name, amen. The theme for today is compassion is the key to service. A simple yet an extremely loaded and heavy phrase. And for us to really understand that compassion is the key to service, to grasp what this truly means for us as believers of Christ and children of God, we need to take a look at a couple of important words. 
Now, when you Google or look these words up in the dictionary, there may be multiple definitions. But for today, these are the definitions that will apply for our mission. First word is service. What is service? Service is defined as the action of helping or doing work for someone. Second word is key. And for today, the meaning of the word key means something of paramount or crucial importance. And last but most important, the word is compassion. Compassion literally means to suffer together. It is the sympathetic pity and concern for the sufferings of mis or misfortunes of others. So as we go forward in the message on today, I want you to ask yourself this question. Do you have the key? Lately, it seems that we are in a world that is completely consumed with self. In our selfishness, self-loathing, self-righteousness, we focus so much on me. Woe is me. Why me? Me this, me that, me too. I this, I that, I want, I need. And we tend to neglect or, or get temporary spiritual amnesia. And we forget that we are not in a universe, a planet, a community, or even a congregation of one. We have become this egocentrically minded society that even names some of its most popular gadgets for the individual. Just think about it. We have iTunes, iPhones, YouTube, iPads, iCloud, and even some people still have MySpace <laughs> accounts. <laughs> We are basically begging ourselves to become fixated on ourselves. God did not create us to live in a bubble as if all things revolved around our individual self. God created us to worship him and to commune with each other. We are God's chosen people. Now, in Colossians 3.12, the Apostle Paul urges us to put on a wardrobe of compassion and to develop real, sincere relationships full of genuine love, humility, gentleness, forgiveness, and patience with one another. Wow. I can see some of us questioning Brother Paul and saying, bro, you just don't understand these folks that I have to deal with at church, at this job that I have to go to on tomorrow, and Lord, don't get me started on my family members who live in my house or the ones who don't live in my house. You want me to have compassion for these people? And the answer is simply yes. <laughs> And we are not to just have compassion for the people that we know, but God has instructed us that we are to have compassion for all people. And just as we are questioning God, God sometimes have to snap us or smack us out of our selfish moments. And how many of us know that God can get our attention in the blink of an eye? Just close your eyes for a moment and think about it as you are on your daily travels and in your spiritual imagination. Just imagine and can you see them? The elderly woman who has to choose to purchase medicine over food. The family who has lost everything in a four alarm fire. The teen mother balancing raising a child and raising herself the working homeless who can't afford housing because there is no affordable housing, the jobless, the mentally ill, the struggling single mother, the struggling single father, the widow, the widower, the orphan child who is crying for love and affection, the drug abuser, the drug dealer, the prostitute, the pimp, the young boy or girl who has been sold into sex trafficking, and the immigrant who had the dream to be in the land of the free, but who is now forced to live in a cage. Can you see them? These and so many others, they all deserve our compassion and our service. 
Now think about a time when someone went out of their way and showed you some compassion. 1 John 3.16 says, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, it is not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Listen up. Not only is compassion just a word, but compassion is taking action. Talk is real cheap. It's time to get to work. So again, I'm asking you, do you have the key? Are you equipped to provide service? Do you have the compassion and the love of Jesus in you to share with your family, your friends, your congregation, your coworkers, and your community? Or are you just lip service going through the motions? Do you let the peace of Christ rule in your heart and keep you in tune? Or are you quick to curse someone out because you felt they looked at you wrong? they stepped on your toe, or they cut you off on the beltway, do you show compassion and let them pass? Give them a genuine smile or even a word of encouragement. Do you have the key? Do you let the word, the message of Christ, dwell in you? Or do you let the word according to Ianla, Tamron, Dr. Phil, Dr. Oz, Wendy Williams, or even Oprah, dwell in you. Yes, all of them have their shows and their claim to fame and maybe even some sage advice, but can you instruct and direct each other in love using the good common sense God gave you? Does the word of God live in you? Unlike the words of humans, the word of God is right and true. The word of God is flawless and it shall never pass away. Do you have the key? Do you sing with your whole heart to God, whether in tune or not? Can you give God your gratitude? I know we can hear our favorite song by Frankie Beverly or by Beyonce, Bruno, Mars, or even the Migos, or whoever your favorite artist may be, played on the radio or in your playlist. And we are quick to sing a full concert or dance out on beat or off beat like no one is watching but can we truly truly worship sing and dance praise unto god the real audience of one who is always watching over us do you have the key and lastly in your expressions of service do you do everything not some things, not one thing, but everything in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to him. Paul told us, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father through him. So in order to have the key, in order to have compassion, we have to put Jesus in everything. We must do all love and all service in the name of Jesus. We cannot be ashamed to give God glory in all that we do. How can we not put Jesus in it? Jesus is the key. Jesus is our greatest example of compassion. Jesus, who took on the sins of you and me and the entire world, Jesus, who was betrayed by Judas and denied by Peter, one of his most trusted disciples, tried by a kangaroo court on some fake news. Jesus, who was sentenced for crimes that he did not commit and crucified on a cross where he was pierced 
for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities, mocked and scorned in the midst of all of that. He bled out blood and water, and for all of us, he did that. And in the midst of that, he still showed forgiveness and compassion. I don't know about you, but we got something to say thank you, Jesus, for. Jesus is the one who laid down his life for you and for me. I believe Lamentations 3, 23 says it best. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Lord, great is your faithfulness. So again, I'm asking, do you have the key? Do you have that real compassion to serve? Is your key the compassion that is paramount and crucial importance that propels you into service to take action to help someone? Is compassion your key to service? Do you have the key? If you have the key, then today is the day that you use your key. Compassion to unlock the mission work that has been lying dormant for way too long. Today is the day that you start that ministry. Use your key. Open that shelter for battered women and homeless. Use your key. Build affordable housing for our communities. Use your key. Start that mentoring program for young boys and girls. Use your key. Provide financial assistance to the needy and the community. Use your key. Start that food pantry at your church building. Use your key. Become that foster parent or adoptive parent for that orphan child. Use your key. Be the advocate and the voice of the voiceless in the world. Use your key. Whatever it is God is calling you to do, we must open our hearts to provide compassion, love, and service to his people and use our key. Compassion is the key to service. Do you have the key? Amen, amen, amen. That's all the time we have for today's broadcast. And we pray that you have truly been blessed. First AME Church Manassas is located at 10313 South Grand Avenue in Manassas, Virginia. And we encourage you to come by and visit at any time. Thursday night Bible study starts at 7 p.m. Sunday mornings at 8.30, we have church school classes for all age groups, and our dynamic worship service starts at 10 a.m. For more information, call 703-361-8791, or just visit us on the web at famechurch.com. Be blessed. First AME Church Manassas invites you to our first AME Annual Health Fair, Saturday, April 18th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Absolutely free and open to the public, join us for potential life-saving on-site medical screenings, exercise, fitness, and healthy living tips and techniques. Plus, get beneficial information on health services, programs, and other wellness resources available in our surrounding community right now. And go to our website to find out about our FAME annual 2K Fun Run Walk, taking off at 9 a.m. before the free health fair. That's the first AME Annual Health Fair, Saturday, April 18th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at First AME Church Manassas, 10313 South Grant Avenue, Manassas, Virginia. For more information, call 703-361-8791 or visit famechurch.com. Be blessed.